Let me ask you a question. Can you tell me what's wrong with this function? Or how about we approach this from a different angle? How would we handle writing tests for this function? It wouldn't be as simple as writing a unit test and asserting some expected output. And that's both because the behavior of the validator and the formatter can change, indirectly changing the behavior of the function, and because the function is making use of an external dependency, which means that if we don't have a DB connection at the time of running the test, we'd hit a null pointer exception. So as you can see, this function is tightly coupled with things outside of itself, and that is what's wrong with this function. But what if we were able to remove the tight coupling? What if instead of instantiating the validator and formatter inside of the function itself, we just pass them in as parameters? And what if instead of just using the global database dependency within the function, we pass that in as a parameter as well? Well, there's a word for that, injection. And the act of injecting those dependencies, in this case by way of the function's parameters, is called dependency injection. The result? the immediate decoupling of this function and its dependencies. And now that these dependencies can be passed in as parameters, we now have more flexibility with the way that we configure what we pass in. For example, now that the use of a specific constructor isn't hard-coded into our function, we can pass in a formatter configured with whatever delimiter we'd like. Likewise, we can pass in a database implementation whose fetch data function accepts that specific format. As a result, our function has now also become more reusable. As long as our passed in dependencies conform to the interface, the objects that we pass in can vary. We've also put ourselves in a better position to test this function, since we can now mock dependencies and test the function's behavior in isolation from them. So there you have it, dependency injection, the first of three coding techniques. Moving on to exhibit B. This function formats a name using a delimiter defined in its parent scope. It then saves the formatted name to a database. If the delimiter defined in the parent scope changes, the behavior of this function will change indirectly. This means that we can't depend on the output of this function being deterministic. This means that this function is non-deterministic, which can lead to some very unpredictable and annoying behavior. To make this function deterministic, we'll use injection and pass in the delimiter dependency via the function's parameters. Now, we can be sure that given a particular input, this function will always produce the same output. But that's not the only problem with this function. This function both formats the name and saves the formatted name. This part of the code here, where we save the formatted name, is called a side effect. In order to make this function pure, we'll remove the side effect and handle it in its own function. So what we just did there, where we made sure our function was deterministic and removed the side effects, is the second technique, that being write pure functions. Now, the third technique we've already started. We were removing this side effect of inserting the formatted name into the DB, right? 
In order to do that, we need to separate this function into two functions, each addressing a single concern. That is, formatting the name and inserting the formatted name are both their own individual concerns calling for their own functions. And this is the third and final technique, separate concerns. And there you have it, three coding techniques. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.